Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the leading employee benefits and engagement platform. Although the words employee engagement and employee experience may sound similar, they are actually very different. Employers across the globe strive to ensure that their employees are satisfied and engaged with their job. But here we need to understand that while engaged employees are satisfied with their jobs, satisfied employees are not necessarily engaged in their respective jobs. Yes, this is a bit confusing, and that is why HRs must be mindful of the distinctions between the two terms, employee engagement and employee experience. Hi, everyone. This is Sushmita from Vantage HR Influencers Podcast, and in today's episode, we'll learn the differences between employee engagement and employee experience. And for the same, we have with us guest speaker, Connie Kunat. Connie is an accomplished people and organizational development executive with over 25 years of experience in diverse workplace environments, culture, and geographies, including Fortune 500. She is passionate about people, the way we want to work, and getting companies ready for the challenges they face to be attractive for top talents. She is known as a trusted mentor, someone with the ability to create and implement effective strategies, processes, and programs designed to develop organizational capabilities and improve operational effectiveness. She empowers companies to implement successful strategies for employee experience, employee engagement, people analytics, and aligned businesses with people. She has earned the title of business economist in Switzerland. Welcome to Shokani. Hello. Okay, so before we start uh, with the topic, uh, please tell us more about your journey in the corporate world, especially your HR journey in the corporate world. Sure, absolutely. So my HR journey started in, um, I would say, 2010. So it's quite a while. I started um, with the Zurich Insurance Company, where I was a project manager for employee engagement. And by that time, employee engagement was just, you know, about an annual survey, um, understanding what people were saying. But over the time, we discovered interesting topics and started analyzing the data deeper and understanding, uh, okay, so there's a linkage between engagement data and other data. And that's when we um, started working on people analytics as well, continuous listening, understanding what is behind the feedback from our people. And that's the journey then uh, going from just your simple engagement service over to people analytics and continuous listening. And then um, um, at the end, employee experience. And uh, I spent there over 10 years. And after different reorganizations, I, I started to become a freelancer and a consultant. And now I support other companies in developing their journey in employee experience or other HR projects around feedback, performance management, et cetera. Okay, great. Amazing. So, uh, Connie, let's start with the topic that is, uh, what is the difference between employee experience and employee engagement? So over the last few decades, uh, there has been a rising focus on employee engagement and a growing understanding of the value of employee experience. Uh, We know that uh, both of them are intrinsically tied and uh, without a positive employee experience, engagement is highly improbable. And again, engagement is the outcome of a positive experience. So Connie, where is the real difference between employee engagement and employee experience? So you actually mentioned it before. Employee engagement is the outcome of employee experience. So with that, you need to understand what is employee experience. So, and for me, employee experience is not just, you know, the employee life cycle. So in, in, in terms of onboarding, you know, recruitment, onboarding, then your whole journey, performance management, your career development, your learnings. And then at some stage, you know, you're leaving the company being an alumni. That's not the only parts of an employee experience. For me, employee experience is a whole bigger picture. And um, things like employer branding. So how do you perform as a company? How are you seen as a company outside on the employer market? These are things that are essential as well. So you would like to attract the best people who believe in you as an employer, who believe what you're doing, who believe in your culture and in your values. And that's also very key to employee experience. So employee engagement, if you have a great employee experience or how you have been treated, how you 
are uh, have the ability to develop over the time with your career, with your learnings. Um, how you, can you grow? How can you experience the relationship between your line managers or other leaders and yourself? So all these experiences are so key and important. That's the difference here. So you experience what is happening within your organization and outside your organization is then how engaged you are, how motivated you are, how satisfied you are, and how much you believe in the culture and in the values of your employer. Right. So, Connie, I believe you'll agree that both of them are essential, right? Employee engagement and experience. Now, when organizations are constantly faced with the challenge of how to deal in both of these fields, now, particularly in the face of a global pandemic and the social and racial mm-hmm. unrest, putting the people first would always stay as a priority. And leaders especially mm-hmm. must uh, demonstrate that commitment and expertise are top priorities uh, by you know, words and deeds now. So how would you yes. like to highlight the role of leadership in maintaining higher levels of engagement or say um, experience? So in, in general, the role of a leader shouldn't have changed drastically. Of course, uh, a normal day-to-day um, work is different in the past than it is now with the pandemic. But in general, as a leader, you should engage your people, you should support them, you should help them grow and you should be there for them. And I think the biggest difference now between pre-pandemic and now pandemic and um, also for the future is also to be a leader who shares his or her vulnerability. So on one side, you need to demonstrate your strength. Being a leader, you're here you help them, you help your team, you help them to grow and you help them to overcome this pandemic, the situation. But then on the other side, you're also in this pandemic as a leader. So you can also admit you have difficult times, you are vulnerable, you are challenged as well with families, with homeschooling, with uh, with working from home, with social distancing. So that's also part of your daily business as a leader. And you can demonstrate, you can show that, you can share your experience as well. So you're a bit closer to your people as well. But it's not that you you need to sit there and, and uh, be all weak. You have the strengths there as well because you're the leader. But having this combination of demonstrating and showing your your challenges as well, but also on the other side, hey, together we can support the company, we can support each other to overcome this situation, overcome this pandemic. Um, I think that is key at the moment, and that's that's what they need to do. On one side, they need to listen to their people, continue listening to their people, mm-hmm. and having an open door, having an open ear, and. And on the other side, showing his or her vulnerability and strength, I think that is key at the moment in in this situation. Right. Well, amazingly explained, yeah. So um, again, uh, employee engagement and experience, you know, as you said, uh, leaders, you know, before also they were responsible, even now they are responsible. And these two things, you know, engagement, experience, uh, these efforts need time to be fruitful. So thus mm-hmm. focusing on employee engagement or employee experience makes sense in a world supposedly dom- dominated by freelancers and uh, short-time employees? Absolutely. I think it's even more essential to focus on this because you have freelancers and short-term employees. They also have an experience with you as an employer. And don't forget, all your employees, your future, your current and your past employees, they are your influencers. So they are out in the market. They talk about you. Now, with all the the platforms, the social medias, etc., it's even more key to focus on the experiences, how you treat people, how you help them, how you support them, etc. All these different moments that are key for for your people, that is even more critical to those who are changing much faster than your long-term employees. Because they are the ones who are, um, they have the experience and they will share the experience out there on the market and they will talk about you, they will yeah. talk with families, with friends, social media, etc. So I think that is key. And freelancers and short-term employees have different experience they need. They have different um, requirements from tools, from technology, also from performance management. They are different um, setups that are needed. So you need to focus on these parts as well. So it's not just your one t- uh, part with your long-term employees, your fixed employees, but these employees, which are 
um, turning and the turnaround of these employees is much higher. And so they, they move to other companies, to, to your competitors, and they will talk. So that's key to support them and, have, and, and help them as with a positive employee experience there as well. Right. So would you like to share some ideas to, uh, as to how, how to engage uh, gig workers? Absolutely. So, I mean, the way how you onboard them, the way how you integrate them into your team, I think it's key. You have to treat them equally like your, your people in brackets. Because um, if you don't give them a feel of feeling of belonging, how do they actually... Um, how, the, uh, how are they able to deliver their best if they don't have the feeling of belonging? I'm part of the team, even though I'm just here for a short term. If you give them the feeling that they're part of the team, that they're equally important, that they're equally, um, that you listen to them, that they are key to you as well, and you, you value their thoughts, you value their work, I think that is key. So integrate them so that they are part of your team. I think that's the best way you can treat them. Right. Okay. So here I have a quote with me by Maya Angelou, mm-hmm. an uh, American poet and civil rights activist. Uh, uh, she famously said that people will forget uh, what you said, uh, people will forget uh, what you did, but they'll never forget mm-hmm. what you made them feel. So employees' yes. perceptions of their employers are primarily shaped by how businesses make them feel. So these vital moments, also known, uh, known as uh, moments that matter, are the crucial and counting mm-hmm. instances that decide whether or not an employee can remain involved with the organization. So oh, what are some of these yeah. moments that organizations can leverage uh, to deliver a superlative employee experience? Wow, where to start? I mean, there's so many moments that matter that are key. But I think key is to understand what are the needs of your people. So listen to your people. What is key? So, of course, there's uh, moments that matter. They are they are just fixed. I mean, your recruitment process, your onboarding process, you have all these processes, which are also moments that matter. But these are the moments that matter. You have just a minimum of influence because due to tools and technologies, there's some sort of fixed. Mm. But then on the other side, I mean, moments that matter, how you treat them from a cultural perspective, how you onboard them. Is there a great welcome day? What is the first day? How is the first week? These are things you have an influence on. And um, uh, research shows that if you have um, a great experience just at the beginning when you start with a company, you're much more likely to have a more positive and higher engaged within the company, especially from the beginning on, um, compared to those who are let alone, who don't know whom to talk to, don't know who is the line manager, haven't seen him or her, and, and all this. So having started with these little moments and understanding what is key to your people, I think that's essential because moments that matter are so different. They're different to companies, different to locations, to countries, to culture. So there are so many moments that matter that might be relevant to you in in one location, but are not relevant to another location. So that's why it's key to understand where you're coming from. And then on the other side, if you have these moments that matter identified, you also need to do your commitment. So you have identified these moments that matter and you don't do anything about it. So why should employees support you and help you if you don't do anything? So there's no commitment on time, on money or on effort that you can actually improve these moments that matter. So that's key as well. If you, if you want to have an exceptional employee experience, understanding your people, understanding what is key to your people, what is a business strategy and what is your people strategy? I mean, if you have a business strategy that says you need to focus on growth and development so we are, we are ready for the future, so our people have the right skills and that's part of your people strategy and you don't focus on that one. So moments that matter in terms of Um, How is my learning experience? How can I actually develop my career? How can I learn the skills that are needed for the future position I'm going to fill in or for the future of work? So if you don't support that, 
on one side you're you you have it in your strategy but then on the other side your learning experience within the company or the organization is very poor so there's a discrepancy so there is something you can actually do and help to have a much better employee experience with the moments that matter that are key to your organization but as well as to your per people i think that's that's key that's what you need to focus on Right. So, yeah, uh, one more thing that I uh, would like to know from you, Connie, is that uh, what do you think about mm -hmm. rewards and recognition? How effective is rewards and recognition when we talk about, you know, employee experience or engagement? Yes, absolutely. I mean, rewards and recognition is, is an absolutely essential part here. Um, it depends on your organization. It depends on what you stand for. Mm -hmm. And um, I think on the long run, it's not always about um, monetary rewards and recognition. I think there's a lot about, you know, how you recognize as a person, how you recognize within the organization, what kind of feedback culture do you have? So do you support your people? Do you support them in developing and growing and um, helping them? And so you have this part of recognition and rewards so that, that you support them from a training, from a career development perspective. And, um, and help them grow. It's not necessary about, okay, I get a bonus um, due to my performance and the rating, et cetera. I mean, performance ratings, they are outdated. So this is, and that was one of my last projects as well. We got rid of the rating within the organization because rating and linked to the monetary bonus is so toxic to a healthy growth and not to a healthy organization that would like to support that people to grow and develop. And if you're always focusing on, on a number and linked to a bonus, how can you actually focus on the person, him or herself, to, to actually grow, to develop? Because there's a whole different focus. And having regular checkings to understand how they are within the organization, how they feel, how they're um, part of the, uh, how, how their career development and how their growth works. I think that is more important with rewards and recognition than you know having having a bonus at the end of the day that is just, you know, yes, it's a nice to have, but on the long run, you won't um, remember the bonus. Okay, great. So any suggestions you'd like to give to our HR listeners? Well, I think um, what I have a, a quote, what I usually do when you, you get started is um, stop starting, start finishing and start where you are. So sometimes HR overthinks um their processes of, oh, we can't start because we have to do X, Y, Z. We can do this because of X, Y, Z. Sometimes we overthink many things. And the second part is listen to your people. It's not about HR. It's not about HR systems and processes. It's about the people. And it's not how HR things people should develop, should learn, should do, should whatever. It's about knowing and listening and hearing what their people say and then meet their needs and then do changes in the processes and the development and that's that's a lot um a lot of the time hr forgets it's not about hr it's about the people and that is right. key yeah it's about team yes absolutely okay so any hr book or hr leader you follow um from an employee experience and then general i follow josh burson so he does a lot of research, he does a lot of analysis around what is happening at the moment, um, especially also, you know, linking it with different companies who support that. And he does a lot of research as well. So for me, he's, he's a big resource on understanding what's out there on the market. I'm also following Simon Sinek, who is, um, I think he has a very interesting point of view, how um, yeah, how, how to treat people, how to work with people and how to look into the culture. And um, currently, I'm reading two books, which are, which are in, and one is one is actually a book that is helping me also during this crisis to actually focus on positive, more positive things as well. Because every day you're in the news and you're surrounded by negativity, by negative news, by catastrophes, by all these these negative news, and sometimes you need something that is a bit more positive. And that's a book, it's called Factfulness, and it's uh, written by Hans Rosling. He's, um, yeah, he died already. So it's, um, he is, um, I don't know from, from I think it, it is, he's, I'm not quite sure where he's from, but um, 
what I'm reading in this book is, and the reason why I like is, I'm a very analytical person as well. I'm, I'm very much um, focused on facts. And this book shows a lot about what is the reality out in the world and links it to the positive sides as well. It's not about, you know, you haven't developed over years or there's, there's so much war outside there. Human rights are not respected and um, female development and all this. But then he compares it to the past years, how it has developed. So there is a development. There's a positivity. It's not that we are there where we should be, but this positive development, I think that's something, um, especially for me, is key at the moment to see it's not all about everything is broken. There are things that have evolved into better situation, but this is something we still need to work on, but sometimes it's, you know, putting us back in the reality and looking into things um, on a different way. I think that helps me. And the other book I'm, I'm reading at the moment is uh, the book from Richard Taylor and Cass Sunstein. Um, they're talking about nudges. And nudges for me is key if you want to change a cultural behavior. So um, if you are in an organization, you want, you're going through an organization transformation and you want to actually change a culture, you need to help your people and nudges are actually helping you. And a lot of people misunderstand nudges and they compare it to email reminders or reminders that are coming. Reminders are not nudges. Nudges is something that helps you to develop. And these are the two books I'm, I'm currently reading and I'm actually um, very much liking them. Okay, great. So finally, Connie, uh, how can our listeners reach out to you? They can reach out to me um, via LinkedIn. You can find me on uh, LinkedIn with Connie Kunert. And I'm very responsive on the LinkedIn side there as well. So if anybody would like to learn more or would like to connect with me, I'm here on LinkedIn. Okay. That was a great conversation, Connie. Thanks a lot for joining me and the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Thank you very much. It was really nice talking to you. Thanks for listening to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast, where we engage with HR influencers about human resources. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify for new episodes.